Hello folks, Bobro here and another modern tape for you folks in our series of playtest sessions um, for Grand Prix Copenhagen basically um, after this one there are still a few more matches not just mat matches or games but actually different matchups so basically we've been going through a pretty sizable gauntlet with my team and my friends so and this time around is actually a pretty exciting one for regular modern for people who've been actively playing the format in the past few weeks uh, exciting in terms of um, being relevant in terms of experience and just um, to see how it goes and so on maybe not so excited in terms of like the the tags for, for some for some it might be actually cool still this is Death Shadow Giant up against Soldrazitron. And uh, I know we've been really putting through the Eldrazi deck, through a bunch of different ones um, as far as the matchups go. Well, because popular deck and then of course Death Shadow Giant, um, you haven't really seen it going through multiple matchups, but this is gonna await you. Uh, you just cannot avoid that because uh, they share such a huge percentage of the metagame share you cannot just uh, go past them so this is why we're doing this and uh, because you cannot play just those decks without actually like matching them together um, yeah and um, if you normally play one of those decks, well, you have to know how to play test this matchup. It's like the first thing you do, pretty much. Unless they ban or unban something, but that's unlikely to happen. And, uh, well, it's not like Death Shadow is just impossible to hate on. Uh, there are some tools, but it kind of narrows down the meta game a bit. But then on the other hand, it's not some ridiculous combo deck, and the deck is not like that fast. Um, I think in fact was worse in this sense. I think in, in fact was worse. And um, even though I, I liked the deck, but I didn't really enjoy playing against it. And it's good that without Pro, the deck actually hasn't really been showing up that much. It's still a deck, but it's nothing overpowered. And this matchup is actually not that insanely fast, so um, it does go past turn 4. Uh, his de uh, the Death Shadow in his starting hand is pretty, um, you know, actually quite good. Um, double land, uh, Cyclers, Tarmo, so yeah, there, there are a few things to do here. Um, okay, my build that day actually seems like it had a Singleton Basilisk color main. Okay, here's an Inquisition that takes away the Shaper. I have, um, I think that's a Ghost Quarter, and then another Resetron piece, and then I believe this Corrin and what Batter School maybe? Since it wasn't taken away with the Inquisition of Kozilek like here. Here's a cycle of a Street Drive. Fitting into a Death Shadow. He can cast Goyf here. It's gonna be a 2-3, uh, well 3-4 three, actually. One of the reasons maybe why I like a uh, giant version of the archetype a bit more than the Grixis one. Because okay, you get Fort Scour to power out Tassigur and Gurmak Angler, but then on the other hand, you pretty much have to have the force cover to, you know, um, bring those out. Uh, yes, this is a free for timer right now, but uh, then the fact that it like it, it can still grow uh, to five six or whatever is it, still crazy. So right now it's just a, I believe that's just a four. No, um, one two three. No, yeah, it's a free four. Yeah. So it's not spectacular, but then again, Traverse is just so huge for the deck. Um, Decay is huge to answer opponents' Death Shadow. 
a retirement guy for something like that. But yeah, the death shot attack can be pretty much almost any color combination. You're based back, that's for sure. You can even build a black white version of the deck. It's certainly possible. Liliton 3 is really damn annoying. It's not like insane. As long as I get drawn and I get to cast car and I get rid of the Lily, but then he gets rid of the corn with, um, with the guy. Yeah, awkward hands, not during the lens in time. Awkward hands. He's awkward. Yeah, Ballista on one just doesn't do a whole lot. <clears throat> it's all better than nothing. Well, actually, it kills Tarmogoyf, never mind. No, it not, doesn't do it this turn. So, yeah, Pun is um, supposed to probably minus Lila to for sure get rid of the Ballista before I get to equip it to color and um, get rid of the Coif. Uh, he looks at Karn and Bringer in Fodman series, sorry, that wasn't um, something that I thought it was. It wasn't better skull, it was Endbringer. Ah, uh, good gets through for another <clears throat> three. Yeah, I should be at 14, I guess. Should be at 14, I guess. Because Gwyth is still 3-4, I believe. Yeah. Still 3-4. Should, should be at 14, I think. Because there has just been two attacks with the Gwyth, and that's it. It's really weird that he decided not to minus Lily here. Because uh, I, I think when I'm screwed... Make sh making sure that the Goyf is actually, you know, gonna stick to the board is pretty important. Um, I should have probably equipped the Ballista first before casting this dismember. Fell pretty low. It should be a 10 here, actually. But, well, it shouldn't be a huge deal. <clears throat> uh, Ballista with the color goes to Lily pushing it down to 4, I uh, gain a life off of this exchange, should be actually at 11, not 10, I think, so I don't think there was an extra card top that joined in before the second attack from the Goyf, after it there was an instant in this member, but not before. Weird. Oh well. Shouldn't matter all too much for this game, but should be careful. Well, here's a big shadow. Well, not too big, actually. Just 4-4. Four, four. And, um... Okay, he's still blessing Lily, which is kind of crazy. So he should have minus, actually, Lily to get rid of Ballista, and then he has a safe death, death shadow and discarding Travers I just don't get it I don't get it like Travers could have like brought him another shadow I just don't see it why I mean he doesn't have delirium but um yeah just one bubble and then he gets it, so it's just weird. He allowed me to actually, you know, just uh, charge up the ballista, so goes to two. Uh, I kill off the shadow, and uh, he still can, you know, I still was able, like, just to chip at Lily for a bit. Okay, Lily goes to three because there's a fatal push. Gain some life, which is actually relevant. Okay, well. Well, he goes up, so he gets rid of my card, which is annoying, but still he didn't play all that optimally. I don't think prioritizing destroy my hand was that much important. 
in compared to just like keeping the beats going. Okay, now I'm like f flooding, sort of. No. Just five lands. But still needed some action here. Even if I draw like a fur tron piece here, it doesn't do anything. Well, he's flooding out too, so that's a thing. Well, here's a map. Got a cast of the temple, crack it off. Yeah, I should have cracked it off actually with the quarters, but I don't know. Actually, keeping up quarters could be better here. Uh, could go for the wreckage just to like draw into something. Probably better because I have only one wreckage in the deck and uh, uh, enough of. I mean, ex extra ways to get the Tron going. Or just, um, you know, extra Tron pieces. See, so, yeah, I think getting wreckage here is okay. <clears throat> I can't activate it now, but well, so be it. He has one of the two basics in his, decks, uh, in his deck out, so I could potentially go for his mana, but he uh, doesn't have anything going on. Nah. And uh, might need those lands. If I had like Tron online, then I will probably cash in those close quarters. Well, he has three of his shocklands out. I think, there, I think there's only one left or something, and one basic. But the problem is that he still has all the mana like to cast his stuff. But uh, for example, if that would be sideboard a game, and then I had like Crucible, then I'd probably just like you know slowly try to cut him off mana. Uh, but I'm not sure if that plan is actually worth it. Um, whoever actually, you know, um, that's kind of, well, okay, uh, Chalice and One Shots of Shadow and Travers, so that's kind of good, plus, even if I put it on two, he can still possibly draw a decay to, to destroy it, because Chalice doesn't counter decay, because decay can be countered. In general and uh, this way I also get to keep up the wreckage not using it now because well he has a lily up he can go for my permanent and ultimate lily but then he would lose it, her so I don't know cashing, cashing in uh, lily here just doesn't seem great because I think I, like, with six lands out and two permits, which are not super impactful, I can actually, you know, um, get things going, still. Uh, activate reaction response so that uh, it's not awkward at all, in terms of packages. Mm, this is actually a pretty smart split. Uh, but probably keeping the one with Chalice is better. I don't remember what I chose. Well, you'll see it in a moment. Hmm. Yeah, that was probably wrong. That was probably wrong. On the other hand, uh, like maybe I had just a land in hand or something and just wanted to keep the wreckage up. It's hard to say. Well, color also deals with... Um, Shadows. Okay, here he can be, you know, uh, drawing like a command or something, and this way he uh, deals with the shaper, gets back to shadow. Here's shadow, but I don't care about it uh, unless he has some removal in hand, which he probably like would want to cast here. Mm, yeah, probably equipping the color and the your shaper may be more important because um, I did play a land. Uh, 
Shadow is not only 4-4, four, four, but it could easily, you know, grow pretty damn large with just a few good draws. Um, okay, he's fetching his last chocolate, I assume. He was at, uh, yeah, he was at 9, no? Yeah, he was at 9. He, oh yeah, he's cracking, yeah, okay, he's cracking his last fetchable lens. And uh, yeah, I think before this playtest session, uh, we fixed the, uh, the Death Shadow deck to incorporate the uh, souls and, I mean, lingering souls and ranger in the sideboard. Uh, I don't think this actually fetches up anything, but it allows him to, you know, make a bigger shadow. But he needs some... Uh, some removal for the Shaper. Because now, like, unless he has removal, I get to eat his Shadow. Ah, uh, but he has the Battle Rage. So yeah, if he didn't have Rage, I was still in the game. But then again, he could still, like, draw into Command or something. But yeah, now the Shadow is, uh, what is it? Uh, for, yeah, 9-9. Nine, nine. And that's 18 trample damage, yeah. Sadly, sadly. If I had my list there, of course, that would have been a lock, but yeah. Yeah, I guess he <clears throat> cracked all the fetches and got all the shotguns just because he had the rage. I don't think he would have done it necessarily if he didn't uh, draw the Timur battle rage. Okay, now we're moving on to the sideboard. Yep, um, not sure if I want to play two copies of this um, fail. Forgot the first word of the name. The Eldrazi Charm, so to speak. So, yeah, bring them in. Um, what was that? Extra color, definitely. Uh, what else? All the proxies of. All is dust in form of Ugins, Ratchet Bombs of course, Surgical of course, uh, Relic because of the Goyth and the Command and stuff, and also the Travers, so yeah. Now the question is what to cut, uh, probably just some um, mediocre cards, like Reshape or Mindstone are safe to cut. map is relatively safe to cut because the games tend to go long. This member still hits a lot of stuff that matters. Yeah, the old Razi Charm hits, among other things, uh, discard spells and Travers, so yeah. Also X as a one-time one mind stuff you really need to. Um, what else is kind of bad? Uh, yeah, so basically just taking out my some reshapers. I don't know if that's enough. That's just six cards. Oh yeah, it can take out maps, so can take out potentially up to ten cards. It just depends on the sideboard. Um, yeah, Crucible is just probably not as good in this um, in this matchup. I think I had one in the side that day. Yeah, Relic is good enough, yeah. Relic is definitely good enough. So he takes out some of this discard when Terfire brings in, what, more removal, it seems? Yeah, okay, taking out Shapers and Mindstones, seems like I didn't side in a whole lot. Like, two bombs... I suppose two surgicals to relics or something. Maybe all my mass removals were already in there. Maybe just decided not to bring them in. But I don't know. It's uh, it's not that bad to go like super safe for this matchup. I yeah, probably should have taken like a better score or something if I had it in the deck. At that point, I don't remember the exact configuration of the builds there. Kind of standard, but like few cards. 
have been shifting or you know, jumping in and out in the past week during the playtests. <clears throat> so yeah, better skull is not great in this matchup. I would say color is fantastic, definitely. Um, bombs are fantastic. Um, Karn is okay. Not sure if all his dust is that amazing. Probably not. It's probably a matchup where you don't need all his dust. But you can keep one. I think keeping one is okay. Uh, you might argue, argue that keeping the map is uh, an okay plan, but um, uh, because you want to go Chalice in one in this matchup, so map kind of becomes worse. Because you bring in color, that's a one drop, but it's just too high impact because of Ballista. Um, I think I did have a needle in the side, but there are no good reason to bring it in. I don't know what I want to swap the needle for. There, there are some matchups where it actually shines quite a lot. Okay, so it turns. Yeah, I didn't take out the maps, even though I think I should have. It allows it allows me to hit the lands in time, so that's kind of important. Okay. But the games go kind of like slow and controlish. Here's a thought says, uh, I don't know why I kept this hand, I guess because of this member for an early goif. And then it did ha I did have like a second land in the map, so technically three lands. But yeah, I, I did have a ballista, and then if I draw colder, then can answer goifs and shadows. Double Angbringer is kind of eh. Maybe I'm supposed to cut like at least one of them in this matchup. It, it's 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 slow and awkward. And he does have removal to answer it. Well, the key doesn't touch it, but then he can still like discard it or just kind of ignore it. Maybe a little bit. Probably not that much. Oh, Lily, uh, get gets rid of it. Yeah, here's just a goose quarter. I'm gonna get a third land anyways, I just don't know which one I want here. So here's a second C's. Um, point out that he probably wants to take out the footnotes here, which I'll be able to cast next turn if I take a temple. Because um, he does realize that taking Seer was good, so I fetch up an Orzatron piece here. He's already at 14, but this is what he wants to be doing. But yeah, uh, if I hit um, appropriate lands and a couple like Smashers or something, uh, then that will be cool, for example. So, yeah. Gonna take my turn. Do I have a dismembered list? Play the land that he knows about. Probably just passing the turn, I guess. Ah, no, I, I can still like, cast a Ballista for one. That at least, um, you know, gonna keep potential Lily in check. Here's a Goyf, which is gonna be what? Uh, he can crack a fetch, the land is gonna be there for sure. Artifact creature. Instance. Oh yeah, he discarded a dismember or something, I guess. With the first Fatsi, sorry for 
be not like when I look at that. So this is for five. Uh, on my turn, I just cast another ballista for two. So yeah, ballista is like pretty cool for this matchup. Not not only because of the color, but also because well, um, the shadow decks have to be very careful because um, if they this jump goes too low, then Ballista can just like win the game out of nowhere. Especially if you get enough mana to work with. Third Votsies of the game. Uh, we can just set a pair of Handbringers. But like, why not? You probably still cast it here. But, um, he knew that these were the cards I had in my hand and that I cannot just I cannot cast them. Uh, yeah, I don't know how Gorf turns into 5 6 here. I'm not sure. Artifact Land Creature, Instance, uh, instance Sorcery, okay. Now here's another Gorf. And uh, yeah. Blue splash over green for counters and stuff like that could be cool. Sure. But Traverse is like so good. Get gets you land when you're screwed and so on. And gets you like one of the win cons. But yeah, for example the um the Grixis version is better against uh, the Seldrazitron. You get to sometimes even stubborn denial without a Christian play uh, on the opposing always does, for example. So yeah, I hope I yeah I should uh, have at least one always does here now, and the Ugin possibly as well. Oops, and somehow I'm dead because like okay I decided to jump and um, one of the coves. Yeah, that was a bit unfortunate. Again, he drew the. That's a rage to just have lethal with trample even through the champ because I sacrificed before the combat damage. Yeah, next up deck is color, which would just clear off the goifs and I would be pretty happy with the game, but no. This is happens. Uh, this happens. Okay, thanks for watching. Bit anticlimactic, but I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe button and until the next sale, goodbye folks.